Hi everybody, okay, welcome back. We're looking today at Jeremy Duff, Elements of New Testament Greek. We're in chapter six at the beginning of the chapter. And as I mentioned in the previous video, we are looking at the idea of tenses. Now in the previous video, I said that what I was gonna do was all this stuff on here. In fact, I only got to the first one because I thought it's going on a bit long. So what we're gonna do in this video then is to pick up that thread. We have looked at the meaning of the different tenses, present, future, imperfect, aorist in the previous video. Now I want to show you basically how to recognize them. And then we'll go through the worked examples on page 67, which tense are the following in. I'm gonna work through the whole exercise with you just to ingrain it and you'll be uh, uh, completely sorted by the end of that. You'll know exactly what we're doing. Right, let's begin by looking at the present tense. Uh, here's the, the present tense uh, written out for simplicity. It's Lou and then a dash. The dash in this little chart represents the ending. So you know the endings for the present tense. It goes lu o, lu eis, lu a, lu omen, lu ete, lu usin. So you have the stem, which is this bit here, stem plus ending. And the ending tells you what person, first, second, third person, and what number, singular or plural. That's all familiar, that's all completely uh, clear and easy. Now, the same thing happens with the future imperfect and aorist tenses. You've got the stem, you've got lu, and you've got an ending. Notice there, lu, and there's the ending. In the imperfect, you've got a lu, and you've got the ending. And then in the aorist, you've got lu, the stem, and then you've got the ending. So all so far so good. So how do you tell the difference between them? Well, there are two ways you tell the difference between them. The first, is that for the imperfect and the aorist, there are different endings from the present and the future. It turns out the present and the future endings are exactly the same, at least for these simple verbs. But the imperfect and aorist have different endings in the verb. So that's one way you can tell the difference, and we'll get to that in yeah, section 6.4, which will be the next video or the video after that. But there is one other way, and this is the crucial, central, first port of call way that we need to get used to telling the difference between present, future, imperfect and aorist. You notice that the future and the imperfect and the aorist have extra letters added either before or after or before and after the stem. Look carefully at the diagrams, get that in your head. The present just has the stem and the ending. The future has the stem and then a sigma, and then the ending. This is called a sigma suffix, suffix because it comes after the stem. So the way you know that a verb is in the future tense is if it's got a sigma suffix after the stem. Make sense? So you look for the sigma suffix, and if you see one, you think, ah, yeah, that's in the future. How do you know if it's in the imperfect? Oh, well, you just do it like this. The, uh, the imperfect has Nothing after the stem, you've got lu plus the ending, but you have something before the stem. This is called an epsilon augment. It's an epsilon, comes and it comes before the stem. It's called an augment because it augments the length of the word, I guess. So epsilon augment before the stem means it's imperfect. Sigma suffix after the stem means it's future. Easy. What could go wrong? Well, only one thing that if you spot both the epsilon augment and the sigma suffix, then you know it's not future, it's not imperfect, it's aorist. Aorist has both. And so you can think of these as little labels, little identifying markers. It's like a kind of binary code, isn't it? This is zero, zero, this is zero, one, that's one, zero, that's one, one. If that didn't help you, forget about it. But any, but any mathematicians would have been helped by that, possibly. But, but uh, uh, imperfect, and our future just have uh, epsilon augment for the imperfect, sigma suffix for the future. The aorist has both. Now what that means is, and here's why I haven't written the endings in here, even if you don't know what the endings are for the present, future, imperfect and aorist, as long as you know what the stem is, then you can spot whether there's a sigma or an epsilon or a sigma and an epsilon as long as you know what the stem is. So what that means, and here's 
the money quote, okay? Here's the thing you need to remember. When you get to a verb, you need to look for the stem. Then you need to see, does it have an epsilon or augment? Does it have a si sigma suffix? That will tell you, in almost all cases, certainly all cases coming to now, that will tell you the tense. And then and only then you look for the ending. And epsilon augment, imperfect sigma suffix, future, epsilon and sigma, it's aorist, nothing, just the stem and it's present. So that's how you identify the tenses. So now we're going to put it into practice, okay? You're looking down at page 67. Which tense are the following in? These are six verbs. Here we are. Let me just read them uh, one at a time just to give us some practice of reading pronunciation. So take a look at them. Uh, read them just uh, with me or whatever. Um, Akus omen. Akus omen. Eblepon. Eblepon. Epistusata. Edidasken. Lus usin. Ago. There we are. Fairly straightforward. Now what's happened here is that Duff has put a little hyphen to separate the endings from the main stem of the verb and the sigma suffix or epsilon augment. The purpose of that is so you don't get confused by it. Okay? He doesn't want you to start thinking, oh goodness, these endings that I didn't expect to find, because if you didn't expect to find the ending, there'll be these. You haven't learned them yet because um, they're different from uh, these, the future being the same as the present. So ignore everything that comes after the hyphen. Completely ignore it. And now look at number one and tell me what tense it's in. Well, how do you do that? You find the stem and then you see, has it got an epsilon augment? Has it got a sigma suffix? So look at it. Find the stem. What's the stem? Akus. Did you find it? Obviously, the stem is aku. And it comes from the verb akuo. Akuo meaning I hear or I listen. But it's got a sigma suffix. Does it have an epsilon augment? No, it doesn't. It's just the, ah, the alpha at the beginning. So it's got a sigma suffix, no epsilon augment, which means what tense is it in? It is in the, oh, it's like this one, isn't it? It's in the future. Excellent. Okay, got the, got the pattern now. So you wanna, might want to pause the video now. I suggest you do numbers two to six. Pause the video, then come back, and I'll show you the answers uh, in the next couple of minutes. And I won't stop in between these ones so we get them done quicker. Okay. Ready? You've done the exercises? Okay, here goes. So number two, eblep on, okay, ignore the ending. Just get rid of that. Forget about that for a second. What verb does it come from? What's the stem? The stem is blepo. I'm oh, sorry, the stem is blep from the verb blepo. Does it have an epsilon augment? Yes. So it's either imperfect or aorist. Does it have a sigma suffix? No, it doesn't. It just has an epsilon augment, which means it is, that's right, imperfect. Okay, let's look at the next one. Epistusate. Ignore the ending. Find the stem. What's the stem? The stem is pistu, from the verb pistuo, I believe. Does it have an epsilon augment? Does it have a sigma suffix? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. So if it has both, the really weird one, the one you never heard before, it's an aorist, a loose. In the ending. Okay, excellent. Number four, editasken. Ignore the ending. Find the stem. Where's the stem? The stem is didask from didasko, meaning I teach. Where Does it have an epsilon augment? Does it have a sigma suffix? Yes to the epsilon augment, no to the sigma suffix. So that edidasken means it's imperfect because it's got the epsilon augment, but no uh, sigma suffix. Okay, look at the next one. Lususin. Okay, ignore the ending. Where's the stem? The stem is, did you get it? Good. Lu from luo, meaning I untie or I loose, as in loose in the sense of set free. Um, uh, epsilon augment, no. Sigma suffix, yes. So if it's got a sigma suffix but no epsilon augment, we go back to our table here, and it's future. So number five is in the future tense. I've written these in, have I? Future, imperfect, aorist. And what about this one? Ago, ago. What's the stem there? Okay, very straightforward. It's just ag, isn't it? From ago, meaning oh, I wrote the... Yeah, that's right. And ago meaning I lead or I bring. Epsilon augment? No. Sigma suffix? No. So this one then is in the present line there. Present tense. So there you are. Now just pause for a second. I think what we've done in this video and the previous one. First thing we've done is we've very 
very cursorily given you a, an overview of the meaning of the four tenses. Present, happening now. Future, happening in the future. Imperfect, happened in the past, and we're saying it was extended in time in some way. Aorist, happened in the past, and we're not saying that it was extended in time in some way. That's the simplest I can give you. Can't get any simpler than that. Okay, so that's the meaning. How to recognise them? How to recognise them in practice? Right now, get back to Duff. You've done the idea of tenses now, six point one. You've done distinguishing the tenses, six point two. I've worked through practice, six point two, with you. I have cut through. I hope some of the complexity in section six point three. I do encourage you to read it, but I don't encourage you to get bogged down by it and stressed by it because. It is more complicated than what I've given you, but believe me, it is nowhere near complicated enough to deal with all the subtleties. The best way to deal with the subtleties is to do what we're going to do in these videos, which is we're going to keep making progress steadily through the book. And every time we come to an example, we'll say something about why this example is in the present tense, or why it's imperfect, why it's aorist, and you'll start to see the language in all its beauty and how it all comes alive, and it will make a lot more sense to you. It's much better to do that than to try and learn some rigid rules at this stage. Learn the generalizations, because the generalizations I've given you, I promise you, they are true, okay? They will hold true, even though they are very general. And then as we make progress, you'll see uh, what we're up to. Okay, so where are we gonna do next time? Okay, I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna do practice 6.3 um, and just get some more uh, practice on the, um, what these things mean, um, uh, and and then we'll um, uh, then we'll actually pitch in there. We'll do six six point four. Then we'll look at what the endings are, and you've got some learning to do. So the first thing I want you to learn now after this video is future sigma suffix imperfect epsilon augment aorist both. Get that nailed. See you next time, and we'll have some fun, and we'll have you reading the New Testament in Greek in no time at all. Okay, God bless. Bye for now.